preparing. I'm just going to keep making shapes because I think probably we've got some YouTube stuff happening. Hey guys, uh, so we're here basically tonight to give you one of our Monday check-ins, more or less Mondays from uh, from now until your exams next year in June, more or less. We're going to be here giving you some help and advice and on your A-level journey. And this week, featured topic of the day is UCAS advice. So our resident expert, Rich Warburton, is going to be just giving you some advice. A lot of you may have had some personal statement work to do over the summer. You might be thinking about which options to do if you're doing medicine or dentistry or Oxbridge. Then you might have to have your applications ready particularly early. Um, so, yeah, don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our live streams. Basically, we're going to be here Mondays, 6 o'clock. And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we do our chemistry, um, maths, and biology stuff as well. Anyway, without much further ado, I'm going to hand over to Rich and straighten up my camera because I'm still a bit wonky over here. Um, and you guys can, uh, if you've got any questions for UCAS applications, university applications in general, then throw them in the chat and we will be here to answer them. Yeah, how are you doing, guys? Um, well, I'm not sure about resident expert, but I think I've probably had a good amount of experience with UCAS over the years, working in a sixth form college, helping students with their personal statements, you know, the changes that have been made to UCAS recently and stuff like that. So, you know, we're not going to talk about clearing or anything like that. We're not going to worry about that sort of stuff. That's like exam time, uh, things to kind of talk about and how to make your final choices. I'm just here to give you some general kind of do's and don'ts, things to think about uh, when you're applying to university. Now, the internet is kind of loaded with um, loads of advice for UCAS. I mean, you get pages and pages and pages of it, so many different websites. For me, I think the UCAS site itself is by far and away the most reliable. I mean, they're the ones that speak directly to admissions tutors and stuff like that. So go to the UCAS page, watch their little videos on, you know, filling out the forms, writing personal statement, applying to different unis and stuff like that. Um, you're going to get loads of different advice. So stick to the UCAS and also go to the uh, university web pages as well. They've all got their own admissions pages for different courses and you need to read up about the course. But I'm just going to give you some general information about, you know, what the UCAS process is like and the things that you should be thinking about as you go through. And then we'll talk about some do's and don'ts. So we'll do, we'll deal with choosing universities first and then we'll talk about personal statements in a bit. Okay. So this sounds really obvious. When you sit down, you think, right, what am I going to apply for? Think, what am I interested in? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, there's an old saying, it's like, if you do something you enjoy, you never have to work a day in your life. That starts now for you folks, okay? You've got to be interested in the course and you've got to do some research into the course as well. So don't think, oh, I'll do, um, I know, pharmacology because that looks like a great career and they earn loads of money. I'm not sure that's true, but you know, don't think about the end game. You've got to think about what you really, really enjoy. All right. And that's how you, you know, find your kind of genre of courses as it were, because there's always going to be lots and lots of different um, sub courses. All right. So for example, you know, you can choose pharmacology, but then, you know, there's like the chemistry side of it, or then there's the animal behavior side of it. And there's so many little nuances isn't it? I think I read there's like 37,000 courses on offer in the UK right now. And you've got to whittle those down to like five. So, you know, you've got a lot of work to do, but you know, whatever you're interested in, that's the most important thing by far and away. The other thing to look at is course structure. All right. So when you've chosen your course, you think, right, I'm, I'm, I'm nailed down to do uh, chemistry. All right. Just, you know, cause I'm biased. Um, there are loads of like general chemistry courses out there. They are all absolutely different in the different universities. So you've got to look at the, the universities that you're interested in, but look at the course structure. And this is really going to help with your personal statement as well. What modules do they offer? Because they'll give you a list of different topics and modules that they'll cover. So that's really important that you look at what modules are in there that you have to do. But a lot of them do have optional modules as well so think about you know what would i choose as an option if i went to that uni what options would i choose because you don't want to give yourself a list of things that you're like not interested in or don't excite you so choose your courses that way as well based on the modules that are in that course now speaking of the university this is a massive one so you got your course nailed down you've got a good idea of what you want to do but which university do you go to is it the older the university the better 
not necessarily some of the top universities in the country have only been open maybe like i don't know the last 30 or 40 years or something like that so don't think that a really old institution is the best thing for your course uh, or the best place for you to go you've got to and this is the best piece of advice i can give you you've got to go there all right you've got to visit these universities because it might be the best course in the country on paper it's ranked as the top course in the country you might get there and think it's a right dump and you think right i've got to spend the next three or four years of my life here so that's no good to you the other really important reason for going is that you can meet well, the admissions tutors, the tutors on the course, okay? It doesn't even necessarily need to be a full open day. So just make sure you go because they keep a list. If you go for an open day, you put your name on a piece of paper, they know you've been there. They know that you're really interest in, in, interested in going to their university. Even if you send them an email, if you've missed the open day, drop them an email, ask them a few generic questions about the course. They will have you on record and it, they will, I wouldn't say they're more likely to offer you a place, but they know that you're generally in, genuinely interested in that uni, if not just putting them in there as one just to make up numbers in your top five. So making sure you contact the university, go there, experience it, talk to students who are on that course is by far and away the best thing you want to do. So the, I would highly, highly recommend you do that. If you haven't been to an open day and it's on your shortlist, go because it might change your mind completely about the place. You get a good feeling for it. Um, how can I describe it? It's like, I don't know whether you guys have bought a car, all right? You just passed your test. You're looking for a new car. You just get a feel for it. It might, but might, you didn't know it was the one you were looking for, but you know, you get a nice feeling for it and that's the one you get. So just be aware you've got to go and visit those unis, not just for your application, but for your own good as well. So that's really important. I mean, how did you guys decide on your universities? Do you remember? Yeah, I definitely, visiting them was really important. I definitely visited all the universities that I applied for. So I, I applied, where did I apply? I applied to Durham, to Bristol, to Cardiff, to Nottingham and Bath, I think were my choices for university. And I, yeah, I remember after just visiting a few, I decided that I really wanted with two universities, you've got sort of campus universities, which will have like all the facilities, the sports facilities, your halls of residence, your lecture theatres can all be together on one site, which some people really like. Usually that's going to be out of town because obviously you're not just going to build it's a massive, like a mini town into itself. Uh, I chose that I didn't want to go to a campus university. I wanted a, t a university that was more integrated into the city that you could walk and, and you weren't just with students the whole time, but there were other people there as well. So that was one of the things that I'd never even thought about before I went to go visit some. Um, some I really liked. So Nottingham, for example, great uni, great course, all these things, but it's a campus outside of town. And I didn't, I chose, I ruled out Nottingham for that reason, purely for that reason. Um, so yeah, I had a really good experience. You also get to meet students from other schools doing that. Um, I visiting universities definitely recommend it. A Durham for me was like a six hour train journey. It was like a long time. I stayed overnight. It was quite expensive, but it definitely was worth the visit. So I'd say that's definitely something to, to keep to just to reinforce Rich's uh, choice there. Yeah. Like you said, you got to feel for it. Cardiff University. I really like the lecture theatres. I really liked the the location of the university in the city i liked the there was a park right next to near most of the halls so a massive park to go and play frisbee and like just i don't know i just yeah picking up a good vibe basically and you can't get yeah. that from a prospectus or from a website so really i'd say go visit them maybe you don't visit all five of them or you don't maybe go visit but go if you're going to apply there i think and especially if it's going to be one of your firm or insurance choices you want to know because when results day comes around, you want to know really, do I want to go to that place or do I not want to go to that place? And really you should make that decision before you apply so that you've got all choices that you do want to go to. If you speak yeah. to any year 13 student, who's probably just gone through clearing and then, you know, that you're then choosing a university that you've maybe not visited and it gives you a whole, you know, there's just more things that you might get there and not be happy with. So I'd say that's the thing course Pierre said course over university. I totally agree. Like pick a course that you're interested in or that you find 
if you're just doing something because your mum and dad want you to be an accountant or your mum and dad want you to be a doctor and your not heart isn't really in it, then it's going to be a long, slow, boring time at university and you're probably not going to do as well because you're not going to be so into it. Pick a course that you're interested in and and go for it, I'd say. I'd say they're the big pieces of advice from me. And if you're yeah. also not going to university immediately taking a gap year something i've been a massive advocate of it totally changed my life it made me more confident social skills emotional intelligence like it definitely didn't set me back in any way and it gives you that bit of time for pausing and reflecting plus you're young and the opportunities to just go and live are basically a carefree i worked for six months i traveled for six months and i went to university so that six month window of traveling I grew up a lot. It just gave me so much a better footing to be an adult in the real human world than just going straight from school where I've been living at home and getting spoon fed my education by my teachers to a university where you're given, you are the responsible for your own learning. You turn up to lectures if you want to, you, you do your homework or your give set work. Like nobody's saying you have to do this because if you don't do it, you fail. It's up to you. So I found going and taking a gap year. So if you're not sure and you're paralyzed by that, then spend the year, write your personal statements, get everything, do the organizational work now whilst you've got the support of your school or college, but don't rule out a gap year in terms of gives you more chance to do work experience, to go speak to people who do that job and see whether that's what really you want to do. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, again, like we were just saying, it comes back to going to that university, checking out whether you want it or not. And you get a feel for whether am I ready to go or not, And which goes back to Rich's point about maybe taking a gap year. But you know what? If you are thinking about a gap year, my advice is just apply now anyway. What have you got to lose? You can yeah. defer for a year. Uh, you don't have to go. You're not contracted in. I think on the UCAS form, it says um, date on planning, you know, starting the course doesn't mean you have to, they'll accept you and you go, you know what, I'll start in September 2021 or something like that. And they'll be absolutely fine with that. Um, they just want you to come to the, their university. They've given you that offer. Don't forget. So um, other things to think about in terms of the course, I would say more specifically, do they offer a year in industry? I knew I wanted to go out and work for a year, go and, you know, and you get to see what it's like working in the industry that you're, you know, training and headed towards. And speaking of which, when you go and visit or when you go to an open day or you go to the department, talk to them. It's like, well, what percentage of their graduates went straight into work? What percentage of their graduates went on to do a PhD? And, you know, what other things have their graduates gone on to? Because it's really interesting. The, if each university has got different links with industry, uh, they offer PhDs in some subjects, not in others, if that's what you want to do, if you want to carry on in academia. So, you know, going there and asking those questions, really, really important. Like I said, for me, what was important was a, a, a year in industry where I went to work. I did pharmacology and I, I went to work for a, a big pharmaceutical company uh, down in Horsham. Don't know if near Horsham down there, but it used to be down there. Not the most, uh, you know, kind of exciting part of the world, I wouldn't say for me, but you know oh, what? Wait, I grew up around there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the year I had down there was amazing. I had such yeah. a great time and a great experience. I mean, it was nice to be earning some money, actually, a decent money while you're a student as well. But uh, yeah, I didn't venture too far from Horsham. I visited Brighton a few times, Ronnie, while I was down there. I should think so too. <laughs> so, you know, there's so many things to think about, guys. But you know what? You go there, you ask questions, you'll get a feel for the place. Um, and you know, that's, that's my kind of best bit of advice for you, uh, in, in that respect. And of course, you know, you got masters and bachelors now, speaking of which there's going to be a difference in what grades they want you to get when you apply. And I saw a couple, couple of people asking questions like, Oh, I want to do this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get the grades. What can I do about, about my predicted grades or well, what can you do about your predicted grades? The answer is nothing. I mean, it's basically how well you did in your first year and your teachers know your how well you apply yourself. Are you kind of um, good in terms of doing your homeworks in time and things like that? Because these are all really influential things because they are going to be the ones that put together your, um, uh, oh, lost the word, reference. That's the word. I knew it began with that. They're the ones that are going to be writing your reference, folks. Now, it's something you don't really think about in the first year, but your exam results and how you, you know, kind of uh, conduct yourself in school or college during that first year forms the picture of you 
that your teachers are going to be putting on paper in terms of your uh, your reference. So that's really, really important. Now, your grades, I would say, if you were predict, let's say if your predictions are BBB for argument's sake, I might be tempted to apply to a university that requires you to have an ABB. Uh, but no more, one grade more than, you know, the, the grades you've been predicted. But other than that, don't do it because it's just going to be a waste of an application. Um, if you're applying for a course that needs A star AA and you're predicted ABB, they're going to take one look and think, well, that's not great. And they're going to look at your GCSE results and stuff like that. So, you know, there's no excuse. There's nowhere to hide. You can't say, oh, well, I didn't really pay attention in the first year and oh, I promise I'll do better this year. It doesn't fly, folks, okay? You've got to kind of pitch it at the level your predicted grades are at, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, you which know is, what? just to jump in there, which is really yeah. why you, students will shoot themselves in the foot all the time, especially if you want to do medicine, you want to do dental, you want to do a course that's going to be A's, and you don't try, you know you're really smart, and you, you cruise through your GCSEs, and you you cruise through your year 12, my exams 12, my, like two years away when you start in year 12. Like if you don't do very well in your year 12 mocks, you will not be predicted those A's and you will not be able to apply for medicine, even though you know that you probably could pull your finger out and do some more work and get those A's at the end of it. Like it really is important that you get up to up to speed pretty early on in your A-level journey. It just kind of also links into Sundas who asked us a question earlier. She said she'd like to apply for dentistry, but a bit scared. What if I don't get the grades, which is exactly that. So another thing is then to have a range using your five applications wisely. So you've got your maybe your firm offer is your really stretch offer that maybe is if you're predicted three B's, maybe that's your ABB offer, your one grade above what you're predicted. But you having an ins an insurance offer, which is something that you'll want to do. Of course, you want to do it at a university you want to go to and is maybe one grade lower so maybe that's bbc or ccc or something that is something that you know that you're going to be able to achieve yeah that's really important i mean when you're applying to those five i mean maybe you'll have in you know in your own mind you'll know which one you want to be your firm uh choice or your first choice and then your insurance choice but you know what? You've got to wait until your uh, your offers come back through. Sometimes the offers come through differently. Um, you know, the grades might come back different to what you expect. A lot of universities, and some of them have been a bit naughty with this, they'll get back to you and say, we'll give you an unconditional offer, which basically means you can just completely, you don't even have to go and sit your exams next summer and you've got a place at that university. But there's a, there's a little bit of uh, small print at the bottom that says, if you make as your first choice university, and if you say yes to that, you have to make them your first choice. Um, and that's what university is doing. They're fighting over the best students. If they really like you and they want you to come to, uh, to their university, they will make you that offer. Um, you know, sometimes it's those universities that have like the lower grade requirements. So maybe if you've been predicted AAB and their entry requirements are BBB, then they'll, they'll just want to try and, I don't know, tempt you in with that unconditional offer. But if it's not the university you really want to go to, then don't take it. That's my advice to you. Don't take it. I mean, these will start happening around, I don't know, just before Easter. But then again, as soon as you get your applications in, they'll start coming through those offers. And my advice is get that application in as soon as possible because they they only have so many places to give offers for. If you've got 50 places on a course, they're not going to give out 150 offers because they won't be able to accept them all, will they? So, you know what, get your offers in first. You're going to be first through the door and, you know, you're going to be, I wouldn't say more likely to get an offer, but you'd be gutted if you left it until the deadline in January and sent it off last minute. And actually the university is like, well, sorry, we would offer you a place, but We've only we've given out all our offers, so you know, so it's tough. We can't give you an offer. Maybe you'll find us in clearing or something like that. So make sure you do it definitely before Christmas. Okay. I would say ideally before October half term. Get it done and out of the way and dust in. It's a lot of work, but you know what? You don't want to be faffing around with UCAS when you're doing your um, your mock exams in December, January, whenever you're doing those as well. So that's another really good reason to get it away, get it out of the way and get your applications in. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So when it comes to so going. Yeah, I was going to say that getting getting nice and organised. And if if you'd like us to do another session on this, then let us know in the comments down below or get in touch with us. 
um, via our courses if you're one of our subscribers because we are we are here to basically support you on your A-level journey and I know this is a very real thing for you guys so if that's something you want to do let us know probably bump in the description of this YouTube video and then we can review those and if there's a lot of support for doing another one uh, maybe maybe more specifically on personal statements or things like that then we can uh, we can totally do that um, yeah. yeah maybe one specifically there's lots of talk of the UK cat and the aptitude tests for medicine and veterinary and all that kind of stuff. So if that's something that you maybe want some help with, we might be able to point you some directions there. Uh, Sundas asked, um, can you apply for the same university but different courses? Well, technically you can, but I wouldn't touch you with a barge pole because that tells both of those departments that you're not committed to either. Um, so, and the thing is your personal statement, that single personal statement goes to all of your, uh, applications. So even if they're slightly different courses, um, you know, you might have, I don't know, Rich, two biology related courses, different ones, maybe. Yeah. So you can choose, you could do genetics or ecology. You can choose to do a degree in those things. Although normally the first year is going to be the same, but it could be genetics and ecology. Totally. Yeah. That's it. So, I mean, if you're applying to both of those courses, what does your personal statement say? Does it talk about ecology? Does it talk about genetics? And of course, those two departments in those uni are not stupid. They're going to be talking to each other and like, well, Dave, he doesn't know what he wants to do. He's just kind of throwing his hat into the ring, basically. So you've got to, you can apply for slightly different courses that, you know, some of them are chemistry with something or biology with a little something on the end. So kind of like, you know, like multiple discipline courses. And that's fine so long as the main thread is the same. But don't forget your personal statement is going to be tailored to a course, uh, to, to coin a phrase there. Um, and, and you know what, if you're applying to an ecology course for four universities and then a genetics course for the fifth, and your personal statement's all about ecology, then there's no way that fifth one's going to give you an offer because your personal statement doesn't reflect your interest and your passion for that um, uh, for that course. So I, I would say absolutely 100% not to stay away from that kind of thing. Um, any other questions I might have missed there, guys? Abigail just put one in saying, applying for unis with AAC and they want AAB, is that too far of a reach is the basic question. So like applying with, you've got your grades already, I guess then Abigail, you've done your A-levels this year and you're applying again this year for universities. Um, or maybe they're a predicted. Or are they predicted grades? Are they firm? Are they actual grades, Abigail? Let us know that and then we'll be able to, to point you in a bit better direction there. Yeah, I, I think one grade up is fine, but I again I would talk to university. Um, I think that's a yep to predicted <laughs> grades. <laughs> we asked too many questions, yeah. but yeah, if they're your predicted grades and that's what they're asking for, then I would call university, visit university, talk to them, um, and ask them. Okay, um, you know they're always open to a conversation. Uh, and as I said before, you know, it's going to be totally advantageous to you by contacting them. It's 100 percent. It works. OK, talk to universities that remember you, send them an email, whatever you need to do. Um, a lot of people asking about UK cats and stuff like that. I don't have any experience directly with UK cat or BMAT as the other one or any others that you need to do for medicine or or anything like that. Um, although I do know a couple of people, so maybe I can, um, you know, have a chat with them, but then I think that's pretty much done and dusted now all the UK cat stuff. Cause if you're dentist med or vet, Oxbridge. you know, or Oxbridge, everything needs to be in on the 15th of October. So I'm pretty sure most of that's kind of done and dusted now, all that testing. I think it's maybe um, something that we can look out to help students with in the future for sure. Maybe just yeah. linking to some other great resources that do, um, good preparation for that. Maybe it's something that we could even put courses where we find a specialist and create our own course for that, something in the future, maybe. Um, another question I've got, it, let us know in the chat or in the description after the video if you're not watching this live. Um, we, a whole bunch of our students from last year, from Taylor Tutors, of, of like Pierre, who's in the chat right now, is going on to do uh, medicine at university. We've just taken on a whole new round of brand ambassadors. And so last year's brand ambassadors are going to university as well. So if you've got questions that you'd like to see of students going to university, I think it's something we might help do so we can we can sort of connect you maybe via our social media so we can do some um some videos like what freshers week is like what it's actually like to do lectures what your workload is like sort of a day in the life of a med student a vet student a dentistry student someone doing pharmacology so if, if you've got questions specifically for students who are 
going through what you'll be doing this time next year, starting university, Freshers Week, all that kind of stuff, then you throw us the questions and then we can we can do some interviews with our students who who we're still in quite good touch with a lot of our students who use the courses and they're really big fans of us and we want to know how they get on. So if that's something you would find helpful, let us know what those questions, your burning questions for students starting university are and we can roll some of that out so you guys can sort of have that experience of the students in the year above. Yeah. So I think choosing university done, I'm not going to spend any major amount of time on this, maybe just five, six minutes on personal statements. I just want to give you some general advice, okay? Because it is probably, well, it's definitely the hardest bit of the um, of, of the UCAS process. And you know what? If I think most people, me included, I think the most difficult thing to write about is yourself. You know, it, it's hard to kind of put down on paper, you know, what you're really interested in and linking that to courses and stuff. So there's loads of advice out there. Again, UCAS website, absolutely the best place to go and get some advice on your uh, on your personal statement or indeed speaking to people that, uh, that, that you know that have gone to university or doing the same course as you or something like that. So there's loads of advice. Just try and streamline where you go for it because if you go loads of places for advice, you end up with just some weird kind of Frankenstein of a personal statement. It doesn't flow. It looks like you've pinched bits from other places. So just be careful about that. So my advice uh, would be this. I'm just some very quick do's and don'ts. I'm a big fan, number one, of the ABC rule in general for personal statements. And I know uh, admissions tutors have said it works really, really well for them. A being activity. So something that you've done, something that you're doing, whatever that might be. It might be your A-level course that you're doing. So biology, chemistry or maths. Uh, it could be your, um, your part-time job. It could be some voluntary work you're doing, whatever the activity is. Next thing, B, benefit. What is the benefit of that to you? OK, so in terms of, I don't know, for example, chemistry, if you're applying for, you know, a practical course at university, you could talk about the practical skills in A-level chemistry. That's the benefit to you. You've done so many practicals and you can apply it to what you're doing on that course. And that's the C, course. OK, so what's the activity? What's the benefit of that activity, whether it's dealing with people, whether it's your part time job, whether it's something, a very specific part of the course that you're doing. So what's the benefit of that to you? And then link it to the course. So activity benefit, link it to the course that you want to apply for. Um, and they like to see that. They like to see that you've thought about the course that you're applying for and you're, you're thinking about what you're, you've been doing in terms of preparation is going to get you ready for that course at university. So they want to see that you've researched the course and so on and so forth, which is massive. And again, that comes through visiting the university, looking at the modules that they offer and things like that. So, you know, ABC, activity, benefit, and link it to the course. Okay, so that, I'm a big, big fan of that. So a quick few do's and don'ts. And again, so much advice everywhere. This is just my advice. Um, don't use a complicated layout or complicated language, all right? You are not a walking thesaurus. You don't talk like that. Don't be all clever and start using big words that you don't really understand because it makes you come across as, well, A, a bit confused as to what you were meant to write, and B, just a bit of a smart aleck, to be honest with you. Just plain English. Don't flower it up with any fancy words or anything like that. Just straight talking. That's what you need to do. Do make sure you organize it properly. Don't actually just put a block of text in okay so make sure you've got a flow in terms of you know talking about why you want to do the course and and you know your abcs your activity your benefit and linking to the course so make sure you've got a decent structure there okay uh next one is um make sure you drop in some evidence that you've been researching the course what i would do is do research around the topic OK, maybe some uh, some reading that you've done recently. Maybe you read an article or a TV program that really interests you in a specific part of that course. That's fine. But don't go on Google and find a book on it that you've never read and put that in your personal statement, because guaranteed they will ask you about it if you go for an interview and you'll fall flat on your face. It's like, well, I read the preface um, or I know what the front cover of it looks like. But if you don't know about it then that's game over, isn't it, really? Okay, so don't lie. Don't say you've read stuff you haven't or watched stuff you haven't. Just you're not there to kind of show off. 
you're just there to show that you have an interest in that subject and it's got to come across but don't try too hard all right i would say the number of personal statements i've read that um i don't know uh, susie said oh i've wanted to be a vet since i was like six months old no you haven't <laughs> you haven't wanted to be a vet since you were six months old okay you've had life experiences that probably led you into you know wanting to work with animals and stuff like that but you haven't wanted to be a vet since you were six months old so don't exaggerate ladies and gentlemen that's the uh, that's the bottom line on that okay so make sure obviously you talk about your courses talk about any voluntary work you've done and again how that benefits you and how it links to the course uh, any part-time work you've got or anything like that so really really important things to uh things to include okay so um last thing in terms of advice is don't get too much advice i've had students before that have gone to their math teacher their chemistry teacher their biology teacher their personal tutor or whatever they're called in your school or, or uh, college and then they've gone to their mom and dad and they've gone to their uncle who works as a chemical engineer and they all have their own bits of advice and that's great but again, you end up with a Frankenstein of a personal statement. You can't follow everybody's advice and cram it into that, you know, few paragraphs you've got to send to those universities. So my advice is stick. I would ask for one of your teachers to review it. OK, and that teacher is the best one is probably the one that teaches the subject that's linked more, most closely to the course that you want to do at university. So if you're doing chemical engineering, speak to, I don't know, you, you've probably got a toss up there between your chemistry teacher and your physics teacher, for example. If you want to do biology, don't ask your personal tutor who actually does drama, <laughs> you know? So speak to your actual relevant teacher and get advice from them. And then maybe one other person if it's appropriate. But other than that, it's got to be all your own work, okay? Because they do check to see if you've plagiarized it from other places too. So it's got to come from the heart. Um, I would say it's being honest is better than being flamboyant or flowering it up and stuff like that. So that'll be my advice for uh, for personal statements, guys. Definitely, I, I totally agree with that. Being congruent, I think, is the the word without using i use flowery language all the time so i'm allowed to but uh mm -hmm. yeah so being true basically if you try and if you try and um paint yourself as a different character oh i do all this volunteer work and i've been working at the vets down the road since i was 15 years old mucking out the cat if that's not true they I mean, they might not bust you for it, but there's a good chance they will. And they'll just also, they see thousands of these things, right? They're very, they're, it, you're one of thousands to them. It's just a piece of paper. Like if I, if, yeah, it would like, it's like with job applications. Like if you're just right, doing a copy paste job application and it's not specific to the job that you really want, then you're not going to get it because the person reading it is just going to see through it a mile away. So be true to yourself. Like, the best thing is to do that volunteer work, to research around the courses, to go visit universities and meet the students doing it and ask them the questions like, that's the best thing to do. If you can't do that, then just say that, you know, you really enjoy the subject and you're passionate about it. And that, yeah, be true. I think that's great advice really with your personal statement. Um, and then having some kind of flow to it as well, sort of realizing what you want to achieve with each paragraph as opposed to just, and to start with, and this might seem overwhelming before you've actually written anything, splurge it down, write a few different versions. There's not that many words in them. And then you can see what's working, see which bits you like, see what the objectives are. But I think that that's really great advice from you, Rich. Um, I think we're about done here. We've gone on for longer than we thought already. As I said, if you do want to ask us more questions on this topic, let us know in the discussion and we can come back and do another live on UCAS or personal statements afterwards. If you've got questions for students at university, then we might look at doing some little video pieces around what it's like to go to university um, for some of our social media staff. And yeah, if you do want to join us on our live classes, maths live classes on Tuesdays, chemistry live classes on Wednesdays, biology live classes on Thursday evenings, um, you can sign up by joining the starting year 12 or the starting year 13 course, depending on which year you're going into from the Taylor Tutors website. There's a few little website changes and a few bits and pieces coming up, but we're not going to tell you about them just yet. Um, you can try out the content guide and try out the exam guide and you can basically... Um, yeah, join us in, our, in one of these Zoom rooms and engage with us and interact with us and ask us questions. You can now also ask us questions 
on the videos inside the starting year 12 and starting year 13 course. The same, I think I saw that you said that I hadn't answered your question for three days. I turned on, we just fixed the comment. There was a bit of a bug with the comments on that course. I just fixed it. And then I was, I spent too long trying to fix it. I didn't have time to answer my questions. So I've been away all weekend. I will answer all the questions on the course today. Normally it's 24, 48 hours, but I don't work on the weekend. So if you ask me a question on Friday night, I'm probably not going to get back to you till at least Monday lunchtime. So just bear that in mind. If you've got a question for me, you want a quick reply, don't do it on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. Uh, I think that's it from all of us. Ronnie's not feeling too great today. as She's been a little bit quiet. She's been sitting on the chat answering all your questions. Any questions we've missed, Ronnie? Anything that's outstanding? Um, I, the physics. Who is it that's applying to do physics? Illusion, Illusion of truth. truth. Yeah. Um, the, basically, to do a physics degree, you need to be a good mathematician. They, mm. Honestly, I'm not saying that because I'm maths. I love physics as well. But um, it's, the, it's the maths grade that they really care about. And anybody from... Um, university who is doing physics will tell you that that's the most important thing so yes you need to talk about in your personal statement how you like the application of maths to the real world and try to give some examples that are not just really generic if you say I'm really excited by learning how to calculate how high a ball will bounce after no you're not nobody is <laughs> excited by that on the other hand if you go really down the other end and just say oh quantum mechanics is amazing you don't know anything about quantum mechanics you don't understand it because it's all based on differential equations that you haven't learned yet so don't try to sort of make it up just talk from the heart about how you feel about physics and also try and get in there that you are a super duper mathematician because you need to be a super duper mathematician to be successful in the physics course. And that's what they're looking for. They want people who are passionate about the subject, but also have that skill of being able to speak the language of maths, which is the language that physicists speak in. So yeah, that I was, I was very pleased to see somebody talking about maths and physics. It's often, it's often all biology and chemistry. So it's been nice. I've been having some chats with some mathsy people that are hopefully gonna come to my lesson tomorrow. And Han the, drag, Han the Drag Race fan said, if I write it up in Word and copy and paste it into UCAS, will it flag it as plagiarism? No, that's fine. As long as you've written it yourself. They'll, what they'll be scraping for are common phrases, loops, like anything that's on Wikipedia, anything that's on any sort of template, personal statement ever. There'll be some very commonly used like model template time and stuff. No, they'll be scraping for sequences of words and phrases and punctuation that um, that have been used in the past. So you'll be fine. As long as you write it yourself, no problem. That's it. On that note, I think we're good to go. We'll see you Monday check-ins, guys. If you're if you're kind of new to Taylor Tudors, you're maybe just starting year 12. We haven't do we don't do GCSE courses at this point in time. So don't forget to hit the bell because we do live streams quite a lot. Our only motivation is basically to help guide you through and help you with your A levels. So um, yeah, we don't always, generally speaking, Monday, six o'clock is going to be a check-in with you with a topic to help you with something that's real for you at the moment. And then Tuesdays is maths, Wednesdays, uh, Wednesdays is chemistry, Thursdays is biology. Um, the stuff we do on YouTube is just a little sample of our live teaching in the subjects. If you want to join those full live classes, then join the courses on our website. So you can actually engage with us and ask us questions and that kind of stuff. Have a great evening, folks. See you guys. See ya.